Hey everybody, this is Jason Ritchie, and I'm finally back with uh, another harmonica lesson. So, uh, a lot of you guys might have watched my videos on scales and different scale exercises where, you know, I just take a scale. And then kind of show you some different ways to navigate around that, like... There's a bunch of them. Anyway, uh, today I thought I would make a lesson on something even simpler than that that's probably just as effective that you can do. So let's take the minor pentatonic scale, the simple five note scale that I was just working with. So first thing you do when you learn a scale is you want to try to get every single note as even as possible. Like, it's the object of the game here is not just to play the scale up and down. Lots of guys can learn a scale in a few minutes and play it. You have to ask yourself the question, why are the best players in the world still warming up with scales when they're... 60 and 70 years old and are professional musicians. The scale itself is a means by which to gauge other elements of your playing. So you're really not asking yourself, can I play the scale? You're asking yourself other questions. How is my intonation? How is my breath control? Is the harmonica in tune? You know, you're using the scale to do other things, to test things other musical ideas against like can I tongue block the scale can I play the scale with staccato can I play it with legato you know these are the can I play how many different rhythmic ways can I play the scale Okay, so there's tons of stuff you can do with these things besides just learning them and then telling your buddies that you can do them and then forgetting about them. And one of the simplest things that you can do besides a scale exercise, besides just gauging how in tune things are, is to just reduce the scale to just a, a few notes. Like, just in this example, let's just take the first three notes. Now, see, check that out. Like, here I am talking all about how to do this. And, I, you know, the first note of that scale I played was a little sharp. You know, it should have been right around. You know, and I teach and play for a living. So, there you go. There's It just never ends. So anyway, I'm just going to take these first three notes. And see how I switched to tongue blocking halfway through to kind of check out where that was at. So now what I'm going to do is just try to improvise with just those three notes. So the first thing I'm going to do is just start on one note. Every time that I reduce the amount of notes that I play, okay, I'm adding more rhythm. I'm having to think more rhythmically. Everybody likes to use this term, less is more, and it's a good term. It's something good to think about, but it's not a complete term because Less is not always more. It's a lot of times more of something else. It's less melody, more rhythm. Okay? So I'm constantly making up for something else that's gone. So if I'm playing just one note. Two, three, four. Two, three, four. Two, 
three, four. Now, that's just the base, most basic rhythm I can do. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One. I can take that same note and just start changing up that rhythm a little bit. <laughs> So I can get, I can do a little bit with just one note. I can start a little bit of something maybe I've never even done before, just by forcing myself. It's like playing a drum. You know, the uh, great New Orleans um, drummer, Johnny Vidaka which always says there's nothing more fun than playing a drum so when your scales get too crazy on you and you think you need more new octaves maybe reduce it and start trying to think of the harmonica more like a drum like just like your first note of your scale is just you know maybe your snare <laughs> So if you get that down, and then you just add one more note, right, you start having even more fun, okay? put in an extra note there. <laughs> See? And there's the other thing. That's the discipline that comes with this. Can I really improvise really, really well without playing another note on the harmonica? In other words, am I in control of my playing or is my playing in control of me? And if I'm playing two blow or two draw bend or I'm playing outside the scale or outside the, the limited notes of the scale that I gave myself, that's probably contributing to my stagnation as a player, to my plateauing. Because if I'm just fall, you know, guitar players call it following their fingers. When they're taking a solo and they're not really thinking or feeling about what they're playing, they're just kind of going through the motions. I can do the same thing on my instrument. If I'm hitting notes that I decided in a lesson that I'm not going to hit, maybe it's time to reduce the amount of notes that I'm playing and concentrate on how many different ways can I improvise rhythmically and not do that thing. So let's start again. <clears throat> and, and remember, it's a good thing when you make a mistake and you hit that other note because that validates your reason to be doing this lesson. <laughs> So there we go. Now I give myself three notes and I can start doing some three note triplet combinations. It's important to remember that a triplet is a rhythmic term, not a melodic term. So I can have three hits, three beats, and only one note. Or I can have two notes and three beats.
<laughs> see, see how much, how great this exercise is. I'm already coming up. I'm already finding things that I don't do well right off the bat. I can think them, but I can't do them right away. Or I can have put in three notes into my triplet. Triple it, triple it, triple it. There I go again, hitting that two draw bend. So now I'm checking out how well can I play these three notes backwards and forwards as just two notes, as just three notes, and then I start to jam on it. taking stuff and I'm seeing if, if something comes naturally to me forwards like this lick, can I do it the other way? You know, if this triplet comes natural to me, can I do it up, can I do it the other way? So these are the kinds of things I do with scales. Now remember, it doesn't just have to be the first three notes of the scale. It could be the second three. Or the last three. some of the same rhythmic ideas I got from the other one. So, you know, maybe you start off with one note and then you and you see how many rhythmic ideas you can do. I move to two, move to three, then maybe move down to four. Maybe I'll add a lower note, this two draw bend I've been wanting to play so bad. <laughs> you can in the different ways. You know, now I now I can start incorporating some of those scale exercises. All right, but just in a smaller space. You know, one of the great things about scales is they help us to get out of playing licks and to start thinking melodically like ourselves and to come up with new rhythmic ideas. However, if we just practice scales up and down and running them and the goal of that practice is to complete the scale, well, all we're doing is just making the scale a new lick. So what I have to do is reduce the scale into a more manageable grouping of notes that I can start increasing my rhythmic awareness on and, stop in, and start improvising better and in new ways and in thinking more like a drum. Thank you very much. That was today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed it. Who dat? <laughs>